Hello, this is Dr. Kim jung Today I will lecture on the causative factors of malocclusion. We perform implant treatment on patients with missing teeth. This patient has a midline deviation. When seeing such a patient, some doctors may consider orthodontic treatment first, but others will try to implant right away. If we implant right away, the implant fixture must be placed at an angle in the current state, but the right side may become a cross bite. In this case, in order to prevent it from a cross bite, implants should be implanted with a slight inclination, but that is not the current state. At this point, it is important to consider what causes malocclusion. In orthodontic treatment and prosthetic treatment, Orthodontic treatment is to arrange the teeth you have, and prosthetic treatment is to replace the missing part with another restoration. Linden categorized them into skeleton, dentition, and function as considerations for orthodontic treatment. However, prosthetics doctors mainly focus on muscles, bone and teeth. First, let's look at muscle, bone and teeth. We have previously learned that muscles can dominate bones when there is an incongruity between muscle and bone. Let's look at the interrelationships between the muscles required for the mastication of edentulous patients, the maxilla and mandible, and the teeth to be arranged in it. First, you can see that the muscles are capable of training and adaptation. Bones are hard tissue, and teeth are also harder than bones. However, teeth would be worn out, movable and loss. By looking at the relationship between muscles and bones, this patient observes whether the face is a low angle type with a round face or a high angle type with a long face. And it can be predicted that the muscle is a heavy force at a low angle and weak force at a high angle. When there is torus in the upper and lower jaw, which is bony exostosis, EMG can be used to check muscle activity when comparing the high angle open bite and the low angle deep bite. The low angle deep bite will have high muscle activity and the high angle open bite will have low muscle activity. At this point, it is important to consider whether muscle development is genetically determined or is determined by the environment. Is the muscle size genetic or environmental? you can probably get a lot of information through Google. It is said that 7,095 of the muscles are genetically determined. Also, the muscles are capable of adaptation. In other words, muscles are made larger through training and unused muscles are retracted and become atrophy. The skeleton can be classified into dolichofacial and brachiofacial. Dolichofacial features are weak muscles the direction of the muscles is directed forward and the face is long. The anterior part has many anterior open bits, clockwise growth, airway and myofunctional problems. Brachifacial features a round face and strong muscles with a vertical closing muscle. It is a low vertical dimension, features a square jaw, has a deep overbite, steep eminence angulation counterclockwise growth, and lacks posterior support. When performing dental treatment in clinical practice, dolichofacial patients have long faces, so vertical increase is not good, and the prognosis is not very good with any treatment. Brachifacial patients should not use the treatment mechanism that lowers the vertical height. Therefore, the extract treatment should be done carefully and the prognosis is relatively good because the response is predictable no matter what treatment is performed. Next, let's look at TORS, which is bony exostosis. This is a condition in which the jaw bone is inflamed, or the chewing function is increased by clenching or grinding. Therefore, when TORS is observed in the jaw, please understand that the muscle force is great. Next, the mandible may be located anterior or posterior. When the mandible is located posteriorly, 
it is called retrusion. And retrusive control that prevents the mandible from moving backwards is important. When the mandible is moved backward, some patients develop TMJ disease, class 2 muller occlusion. If the occlusion is different of the both sides may occur a midline deviation. At the same time, you may have problems with your muscles or ligament. So far, we have looked at the correlation between muscles and bones. And next, we will look at the correlation between bones and teeth. The bones and teeth are made up of hydroxyapatite, which is more in the teeth, and the strength is also heavier. In case of edentulous dentition of the bone will also be loss. This means that bones can be affected by teeth. Consider the relationship between the growth of eminence and the different mullocclusions. The mandible consists of the muscular bone to which the muscles are attached, the basal bone through which the inferior alveolar nerve passes, and the alveolar bone that contains the teeth. Eminence is the area that covers the condyle, and let's see how it grows. When a person is first born, there is no inclination of eminence. However, as the teeth develop, the inclination of the eminence begins to form. As the permanent teeth erupt, the inclination of the eminence is completed. In other words, the inclination of eminence begins to occur due to interference, according to the development stage of the upper and lower anterior permanent teeth. SCI, sagittal condylar inclination, is formed according to the inclination of the eminence. The inclination of eminence is almost flat until the primary teeth, but is formed to some extent when the primary teeth is completed and is clearly completed in adulthood. Let's evaluate this in class 2 div 1, class 2 div 2, class 1 state. Class 2 div 1 has the maxillary incisors labially. At this point, the inclination of the eminence is flattened. Class 2 div 2 has maxillary incisors almost upright. At this time, the inclination of eminence becomes steep. So, what was the influence of this eminence inclination? It can be said that it was affected by the growth stage and inclination of the teeth. Growth of eminence is dependent on the morphology of enamel of teeth. Process of temporomandibular joint is closely related with occlusal guidance. SCI, the development of bones, are related to the position of the teeth. In other words, teeth are aligning with the given bony framework and affect bone growth. Next, let's look at the relationship between muscles and teeth. The muscles and teeth should be in harmony. But if they are disharmonious, occlusal interference or premature contact may occur. What reactions will occur at this time? In this patient, the midline of the mandible is deviated to the left and the left is cross bite. Both the upper and lower arch forms are asymmetric. Let's look at the occlusion once again with the patient's centered position. The arch of the maxilla will look narrow. In other words, this patient appears to have become a functional shift due to the narrowing of the maxillary arch. At this time, the patient will chew on the areas where the upper and lower teeth contact multiple areas not the area where only one point. Therefore, a functional shift occurs and the muscle is adapted from that state. For example, in patients with tongue thrusting, it can be thought that anterior open bite occurred due to the habit of sticking out the tongue in general. This is an active case in which the tongue controls the muscles. This is called the active tongue thrusting habit in terms. You can think of it from a different angle. The anterior open bite has already been formed for some reason and the tongue is forced to stick out to adapt. 
In other words, the muscles are adapted according to the location of the teeth. This is called passive tongue thrusting habit. When occlusal interference occurs in the dentition, muscle activity increases due to parafunctional activities such as bruxism or clenching. In these patients, tooth abrasion is observed. Periodontal disease or TMJ disease may develop. However, not all of these symptoms occur at once. In each patient, symptoms appear first in their weak areas, second in the relationship between muscles and teeth. Canine guidance and group function are considered in the occlusal relationship and muscle activity is evaluated at this time. Third, in the discrepancy between the muscles and teeth, if the teeth are constantly affected, may occur cracks, abrasion and mobility on the teeth. However, these symptoms will occur when affected for a long period of time. It is said that excessive muscle activity does not cause tooth abrasion, bruxism. If each patient has weak teeth, it is caused by abrasion. And if the joint are weak, it is caused by periodontal disease. Meta described this as the term weak link theory. This theory suggests that when occlusal forces are of such intensity and duration, that they override the body's adaptation capacity. Stomatognathic breakdown will occur. If one considers the stomatognathic system as a chain comprised of the teeth, the periodontium muscles of mastication, and the teens, the weakest link in the chain will break first. Therefore, it is important to strengthen the weak areas. In other words, in the case of abrasion or bad teeth, restoration treatment will be required and jaw, joint treatment and periodontal treatment will be required. Next is muscle activity and let's look at the pattern of occlusion. Canine guidance is said to have the weakest muscle activity. So when will your muscles become more activity? The first is when there is interference on the mediotrusive contact, that is, the balancing side. And the second is when there is a group function. And the third is when there is steep canine guidance. In summary, if there is interference on the balancing side, muscle activity increases due to interference. The group function in which the teeth in the posterior teeth are brought into contact during tooth grinding also increases muscle activity. Sujimoto studied patients with bruxism, which became severe in group function occlusion, at which time some doctors tried to give steep canon guidance. However, he said that in patients with steeper canon guidance, the teeth became more severe, which is steep canon guidance can cause high muscle activity in the patient with high sleep bruxism. Severe abrasion of teeth, a fraction, crack, its Due to initial occlusal interferences as symptoms that occur over a long period of time. However, in order for these symptoms to develop, muscle activity would increase initially. And an avoidance mechanism would have appeared. When the muscle reaches a certain limit when expressed as a stress-strain curve, the muscle is adapted. Initially, the muscles are adapted, and beyond this stage, the muscles undergo permanent deformation. The avoidance mechanism is that if the tooth is not positioned well, early contact in the process of mastication and pronunciation is difficult. It will occur, and the muscle's avoidance reaction is expressed as a functional shift. In other words, the muscles and teeth must be in a harmonious relationship. But if there is disharmony after adaptation, it has a detrimental effect on dentition due to muscle activity for a long time.
Looking back at the relationship between muscle, bone, and occlusion in the weak link theory concept. If interference occurs in teeth, muscle activity increases due to group function, mediotrusive grinding. Steep canine guidance, loss of retrusive control, it's which causes bruxism and clenching, which affects teeth, periodontal or jaw joints. In summary, the teeth dictate adaptation. The jaw joint, which is the bone, has structural changes due to passive adaptation. And the muscles are actively adapted to cause functional changes. Therefore, it can be said that the location and function of the teeth are very important. Thank you for watching.